Hello everyone and welcome back to part 16 of Python Full Course and today we're going to have a general look at the NumPy Python library which is a library that allows us to manipulate high dimensional arrays. So let's get started. So what is a NumPy array? A NumPy array is just a array, a NumPy wrapper around lists of lists. So what does that mean? So it means that, for example, if you had a list of numbers such as 2, 3, 4, but then you had a list of these list of numbers, so I wrap those in square brackets. Then, for example, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5. Then what I can do is that I can wrap it in a NumPy array. So I can say np.array this. So I can just say test is equal to np.array, this thing here. So you have to make sure that you import numpy as np. Uh, we always call it np because it's sure to write the numpy. And then I can print the version just to make sure it's working. So I have version 1.19.4. And now what I can do is that I can print its shape. So what is the shape of this array? So print test.shape. What does this mean? This means that it's a list with two elements and each of these sublists contains three elements. There's also a dtype property. So what you can do is that you can say print test.dtype and this just means the data type inside. And you can see that it will say that it's int 64. So this means it's an integer 64 bits. And what's so fun about this is that with NumPy, everything is just so easy. So I'm just going to define another array, another NumPy array. So let's just call it test2. And then what I can do is that I'll just change these numbers a bit. And now I can do addition. So let's say I can say test plus test2. I can say result is equal to this. And I can print result and as you can see it added each of the elements element wise so this is a much much easier syntax to read compared to having to do a for loop and then saying for each element you want to add this with this and then you have to put it to that list numpy just does it for us and all we need to do is just say plus for subtraction it's the same thing. So what you do is that you just put a minus here and magically it's just going to subtract each element element wise. Also, what you can do is that you can subtract constant, so test minus four for example. And it will also work. So if you want to subtract a sublist, so the list of three elements here, so that it's going to subtract to each of these rows then if you try to do something like np.array and then let's say for example let's just say minus 5 minus 8 and then 20 then you'll see that it's going to apply each of the subtraction of rows to each of these matching rows and so this is something that's called broadcasting in numpy which means that's going to take this thing with the smaller dimension and just going to make sure that it's going to take every single slot in the in the bigger dimension one so this is going to duplicate two rows and then it's going to subtract element wise with the constant it's going to duplicate itself over each of the entry of this test array and then it's going to subtract for multiplication what you can do is that you can also do multiplication just test times five so result is equal to test times five and now I can just say print result. And hopefully repl.it is going to be fast enough. So let's look at it and we'll wait a bit. So now we see that everything has been multiplied by 5 because it's either ending by 5 or by 0. So this just means our multiplication 
has worked. Also, multiplication, this symbol can also stand for element-wise multiplication. So what you can do is that you can say test times test 2. And if you print this result, then you'll see that what it's going to do is that it's going to say 2 times 5, 10. Then 3 times 3, so 9. Then 4 times 4, 16. 3 times 4, 12. 4 times 2, 8. 5 times 5, 25. So this is element-wise multiplication. So when you put a star, it's going to, put, it's going to be an element-wise multiplication. However, in Python, they also have an operator just for matrix multiplication. So now I'm just going to define my own things. So I'm going to say matrix 1 is equal to, let's say, something like this. np.array, uh, 1, 2, 3, then 2, 3, 4. And then for matrix 2, I'm just going to say it's going to be np.array. And now, let's say it's 1, 2. 1, 2, 2, 3, and then 3, 4. Now if you just say um, result matrix equals matrix 1, and now we want to do a matrix multiplication. And how we do this is that we use the at operator. So commercial A, and then you say matrix 1, at matrix 2, and it stands for matrix multiplication. We can now print the result matrix, and now we'll see that it's going to multiply. So here, as you can see, it's going to say 14, 20, 20, 29. And you just need to believe me that this is the correct result of matrix multiplication. If you swap the sides, so if you put matrix 2 before matrix 1, it's going to give a completely different answer. So it's going to be a 3x3 three three matrix. So now we've seen everything about matrix multiplication as well as element-wise multiplication. We're now going to look at how we can get each element inside a NumPy array. So let's say I want to get the first element in a NumPy array. You know what I can do? I can say print test index 0. It's just like a list. And you'll see that what's going to print is not going to be an element, but it's going to be a list. But is it really a list? We can say print type of test 0. So we're going to see if it's really a list. And you'll see that actually, no, it's not a list. It's still a NumPy array. So even though when it's printed, it may look like a list, it's still a NumPy array. So I can print test 0, and then let's say I want to take the first element from that list, so 2. What I can do is I can say test square bracket 0, then square bracket 0 again. And as you can see, I will get 2. If I change this to 1, then you see I will get 3, so this is correct. And I can change for like the second row, for example, and I should get 4, and I have 4. So this is awesome. There's also an alternative notation for indexing, which is just only using one single bracket, and how you do this is that you just put a comma. So test 1, comma 1. And you'll see it will give the same answer. So this is awesome. So just in case, if you don't remember, you just have to put the name of the array, square brackets, and then what you can do is that you just put the index you want, and if it's a subarray that you want, so an element of the subarray, you just put another index, and if it's the subarray of the subarray, then you can say uh, another index as well. And if you don't like it, you want it to be more compact, you can just separate the indexes by a comma. We're now going to look at slicing, which is one of the most useful features in NumPy. So let's say I had test. Now I wanted to get, for example, 2 from here as well as 3 from here. So what I want to do is that I want to make sure that I have like this, that sort of column. So the first column. So I want it to be such that it's test of something, then zero. The notation for this is that if you want to do this, you have to first put a colon, and now you can print it. So let's just see what's going to say. And if we print it, we see 
that we don't get what we want and if you put commas we see that we get what we want so in summary you have to make sure that you do print test of something then you put colon to say that you want everything in that dimension comma and then you put zero so the first element so let's try it again let's say i wanted to only get the second the, the element at the second index so the third element then what i can do is that i can just say test colon comma two and this is going to slice correctly so four five some useful methods in python are np.0 so this allows you to create a numpy array filled with zeros of the shape you want so let's say i wanted to create a 3x3x3 three by three by three, uh, tensor or just higher dimensional array then i can i can just say np.0s then you have to put a tuple so parenthesis then 3 3 3 so this is matrix no result nah just array is equal so this is higher correct so higher array now it won't complain higher array equal np.0 333 three, three. and what I can do is that I can just print higher array now you see that this is actually a 3 by 3 by 3 array there's np.1s which is literally the same thing it's just that it's going to fill it with ones. So np.1s, 333. Three, three. So 11111. Also, I think I need to mention something. It's that if you say, for example, what is their d type, then higher array dot d type printed we'll see that it's a float 64. So np.1s and np.0s both create an array of float 64 or float 32 depending on your system while for example here it would detect it automatically and it would just say that it's of int 64. So I'm just going to take test and I'm going to divide by 5. So print test divided by 5. I should expect to see lots of decimal and so I have 2 divided by 5 gives me 0 0.4, then 3 divided by 5 gives 0 0.6, then 4 divided by 0 0.8, not 4 divided by 5 gives 0 0.8, and so on. And I can, I can just print the D type of this. And now you'll see that when it's of n64 and you divide, it's going to create a float 64. But just because of how used how we are just so used to it, we'll always just say that's test dot as type float 64. So we can read it to a float 64 before, and then we divide by 5. And you see it's going to give us exactly the same thing. So if I just take off the D type, then I have that it's the same array. If I want to apply a function to a numpy array, so I, I can say define multiply by 2 takes x and then return x by 2. So this looks simple and what's so fun about it is that it generalizes well to numpy arrays. So I can then multiply by 2, test, and just print it. Now I will have test multiplied by 2. I can say x times 2 plus 30 and it's still going to work. So you see, it added 30 to everything. The reason, but the problem is that when you're going to put more difficult functions, it's not going to work. So for example, if you want to say if x bigger than 0, then return minus 7, and else return 28. So I'll just rename it to mystery function and then print mystery function. 
it's going to give a, a lot of error. So value error, the truth value of an array with more than one element is ambiguous. Use a dot any or a dot all. So this is just an error saying that x bigger than zero cannot be interpreted correctly because you don't know if you're just saying is one of the elements going to be bigger than zero or does all of the elements have to be bigger than zero. But I don't want to dig deep into that. What I want to do is that I want to apply mystery function to each of these elements. Here comes np.vectorize. So np.vectorize takes as input a function and it will spit out a new function for you. So mystery vectorize function is equal to np.vectorize mystery function. And now if I say mystery vectorized function, then you'll see that it's been adapted so that it's going to output the same, it's going to output the result for each of the element. So here, because everything's bigger than zero, it's going to do minus seven. But let's say I change the sign, so minus, minus three, and now I have a 28. So this was all about vectorize. You can also reshape arrays. So what does this mean? Reshaping means that you're going to change the shape of an array. So let's say I had a array that looks like this. So my array, let's go to np.array, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's nice and all, but I want to just pack it in a 3x3 three three grid. I can just say my reshape is equal to np.reshape my array and then just say the new shape I want. So 3x3 three three, and I can print my reshape. Now my reshaped is actually reshaped correctly. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in a neat 3x3 three three grid. I can also say, um, let's say I can say 3x3 three by, three by 1. So this is just going to make it such that each element here is going to be a list itself. And now you'll see that each element here is going to be a list of itself. There's also an alternative way you can reshape arrays, and that is just using dot reshape. So if you just say dot reshape, three, 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 one. And then we'll see it's still going to work. Now we're going to look at the transpose method. So let's say I had my matrix is equal to np.array23. Then let's say for two, five, six. All right. And now we want it to be a transpose. So I'm just going to print the shape for now. Print my matrix dot shape. And you'll see it's going to be three by two. What I want is that the transpose gives me a shape of two by three. So if I say print np dot transpose my matrix dot shape, then you'll see that I will have the correct shape, so 2 by 3. And if I print the array itself, you'll see I get the correct array transposed. There are also some useful functions in the NumPy that are used to generate random arrays. So there's np.random.rand, so what you can do is that you can just say my random is equal to np.random.rand and you just put the shape you want. So 10 by 10, and you print my random. And np.random.ran is going to generate a 10 by 10 array where each element inside is sampled from a uniform distribution between zero and one. So as much probability between zero and one. Basically, it's going to give you a random number between zero and one to put it simply and I get random numbers between 0 and 1. So this was very fun. Let's say I put 10, 10, 20. This is going to be a big array. I hope it doesn't crash. And you see it's going to work. All right. There's also np.random.randint. And this is quite more particular. And there is random integer. So I can say my randint is equal to np.random.randint. And now I have to say the low point. So let's say I say it starts by minus 5, 
I have to put the high point, so end at minus 5. And now I put the number of elements I want, so 50. I can print my rendered. Now you can see it's going to give me elements, so ranging from 3, minus 1, so ranging from minus 5 up till 4. This isn't exactly the format that I want, so what I want is that I want it to be a 10 by 5, let's say, so that reshape, 10 by 5. Now it's going to give me a neatly 10 by 5 packed grid. There's also np.random.random, which is going to generate a random number from a standard, so from a standard distribution, Gaussian, bell curve, anything you want to call it. So my random is equal to np.random.random, and now you say the number of elements you want. So let's say I have 200, but that's not the shape I want. Dot reshape, let's say 10 by 20, and I print my random. Now when you see, when I run it, it's going to print 10 by 20, although it's a bit too big to show it, but uh, you can believe that it's going to be 10 by 20, sampled from a random normal distribution. Finally, we're going to look at how we can save NumPy arrays to a file. So I, what I can do is that I can just say, if I remember correctly, it was np.save. So, np.save method, and then we'll see that geeks for geeks is going to help us. And it says that what we're supposed to do is that we put the file, and then we put the array. So, let's say I want to save random, so I can just say np.save my... So is it the... what is it first? It's the name, so my random, and then I can just put the array my random. I can just say print, save, let's run it, and now it's written saved. So I had a new file, so I have my myrenden.npy. So let's just create a file called loader.py and see what's happening. So how do I load a file? I just say np.load and the file myrenden.npy. So data is equal to this, and if I print the data, so python python loader.py and you see it's going to print what we want. So this was about how you can save one array into a .mpy file. But if you wanted to save multiple files, you'll have to use .npz, which is just like numpyz, so numpy zipped I guess. So how do we do this? Is that we just say np.savez. So, again, trustworthy internet, so numpy, save z, and you'll see that we'll have a, from the numpy documentation, we're going to have, you have to put a file, and then you just have to put arguments. So, how does this look like in practice? I say, um, lots arrays, but mpz, and now I can just, they ask me to put a dictionary, so a dictionary, so I'm going to say rand n is going to be my rand n, then rand int is going to be my rand int, and random is random is going to be my random. Alright. So I can also print say blocks. Let's run it. Now I have a new array. And oh, I made a mistake. What you have to do is that after you put dictionary, you put two stars. So two stars is going to make sure that's going to make it so that it becomes keyword arguments. So this becomes equivalent to np.saveZ, plus arrays dot npz, rend and equal my rendin, rend and equal my rendin and random equal my random. So this is the same thing. Now let's run this. This is going to save a new array for us. 
and we can now run this again, print data random. So Python, lower pi. And you'll see it's going to print what we want. We put npy and we say for example again my random. You'll see that I wasn't fooling you, it's actually going to be correct. Thank you for watching. If you like this content, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And in the next video, we're going to look at matplotlib, which is a Python plotting library. So stay tuned.